You're here to learn about nutrition and a healthy lifestyle for your whole family. Now, you probably are well aware that eating right and exercise can do worlds of good for your health, but that's always easier said than done. So for the next few minutes, I'll talk about nutrition and why it matters to you. I'll go over what it means to eat healthy. I'll talk about the plate method. And I'll give you some meal planning tips. Then we'll wrap it up with what it means to be active and do some goal setting. This whole program should take about 25 minutes. All right, I think that's it. Let's get started. Now, you probably already know that eating right and exercise play a role in good health. In fact, it's very important to do these things as a family. It's much easier to be in it together. So this program will go over information that's good for the whole family. Now, I know you might be thinking, my family won't eat healthy food. Eating right is expensive, or I just don't have time for exercise, but you can do this. And you'll be glad to know you don't have to do it all at once. In fact, you should not try to change everything overnight. That can be overwhelming and hard to stick with. So even though we'll talk about quite a few ways your family can work towards a healthier lifestyle, you'll start with just one thing you feel like you can do. And it's best to learn about a healthy lifestyle early. And that's because we develop habits as kids, and those habits tend to stick with us as adults. All right, our bodies and brains need things like protein, fats, fiber, vitamins, and other nutrients to work the right way, have energy to think and be active, build strong bones and muscle, and feel full and satisfied. And as you may already know, foods and drinks have calories. And eating and drinking too many calories can lead to weight gain. Too much weight or being overweight can raise the risk for many health problems. These are things like heart disease, like a heart attack or stroke. Being overweight can also raise the risk for depression and certain cancers like breast and uterine cancer in women and colon and prostate cancer in men. Now, these problems usually happen in adults, but the problems may start forming when we're young. Kids who are overweight as children tend to be overweight as adults. And unfortunately, some problems can happen in both kids and adults who are overweight, like high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Both can cause heart problems, diabetes, problems with your joints like your hips or knees, because extra weight can put more stress on joints. And it can cause problems breathing like asthma or sleep apnea, which is trouble breathing at night. I know this might all sound scary and overwhelming. The good news is eating healthy and being active can really help lower the risk of these problems. Good nutrition can even help with learning and doing well in school. So next, we'll talk about what it means to eat healthy. But before we do, I want you to know diets don't usually work, especially in the long run. That's because it's hard to stay away from certain foods forever, the way diets ask you to. Really, it should be about moderation. So nothing is off limits. You just have to watch how much and how often you eat out and have treats. Plus, it's about more than just keeping to a healthy weight. Remember, we need the right nutrients for our bodies to run well, too. So think about this as a way of eating for life, not a diet. All right, let's move on. Now, it's best for kids to learn what it means to eat healthy when they're young. That's because starting early helps build good habits for life, and that can help prevent problems from happening later on. But it's never too late to start. In fact, this information is good for the whole family, kids, teens, and adults. So what does it mean to eat right? Eating right means getting foods with a lot of nutrition, so you can get the vitamins and minerals your body needs. Of course, fruits and vegetables top the list of healthy foods. They can help prevent things like heart disease and even some kinds of cancer. They're also low in calories and high in vitamins and something called fiber. Fiber is something your body can't break down easily, but that's not a bad thing. It helps you feel full, helps with digestion and keeping you regular, and is good for your heart. Whole grains are also really good for you. They give you energy and they have fiber too. Whole grains are things like 100% whole wheat bread, oatmeal, barley, brown rice, and whole grain cereal, or even things you might not have heard of before. 
like bulgur or quinoa. Try to make sure at least half the grains you eat are whole grains. They have more fiber and nutrients than refined grains, things like white bread or rice and pasta. That still leaves room for other things, like having white rice with dinner some nights. But try making small switches to get whole grains in each day. You could choose oatmeal or bran instead of sugary cereal. Use 100% whole wheat bread instead of white bread on your sandwich. Or have brown rice instead of white rice. You can even mix half whole grains with half refined grains to start. For example, half whole wheat pasta and half regular pasta. That way you can get used to the taste and texture. Making changes like this can really add up over the course of the day and week. All right, low fat and fat free dairy, like 1% milk or cottage cheese, are nice options too. Dairy has important nutrients like calcium, which are good for your bones. And just so you know, even if it's low fat or fat free, it has just as much calcium and vitamins. Dairy also has protein. It's important to focus on heart healthy protein as part of a meal plan. Protein is used to build things like muscle and heal cuts and sores, and it helps keep us full and satisfied between meals. And heart healthy is just what it sounds like, good for your heart, along with low fat dairy. You can get this from things like fish and seafood, just not fried. Lean meats, like lean ground beef or cuts of pork or beef with the word loin in it. Poultry, like chicken and turkey breast without the skin. Nuts and seeds, like walnuts and sunflower seeds. Beans, like black and pinto beans. And tofu. All right, even though you've probably always been told to stay away from fat, some of it can actually help protect your heart, called heart healthy fat. It can be found in foods like nuts and seeds, peanut butter, fish, avocados, olives, and certain oils, like using olive or canola oil in salad dressing or when you cook. But there are fats you should try to eat less of because they may raise the risk for heart problems. Saturated fat is one kind of fat you should try not to eat much of. It's found in a lot of animal products like butter or lard, fatty meats like sausage, bologna, broths, and hot dogs, and cheese. Trans fat is another kind of fat that can cause problems, and it's best to stay away from it completely. It can be found in some kinds of chips and crackers, a lot of fast foods and restaurant foods, and baked goods and desserts like packaged cookies or cakes. There's usually a lot of salt, sugar, or refined grains in these foods too. So it's a good idea to make sure you don't eat too much. Okay, the number one thing everyone can do for their health is cut back on sugary drinks. You know, pop or soda, energy drinks, sports drinks, fruit punch, sweetened iced tea, and even juice. These have a lot of calories and sugar. And I know you might be thinking, wait a minute, I thought juice was good for kids. And while 100% juice does have some nutrients, it also has a lot of sugar and calories. So it's better to eat, not drink fruit. In fact, sugary drinks are one of the biggest causes of weight gain. Here, let me show you. Take a look at how many calories and sugar are in 12 ounces of a few drinks. Just so you know, 12 ounces is how much is in a can of soda or a bottle of tea. An average can of soda has 10 teaspoons of sugar and 150 calories. 12 ounces of sweetened iced tea, or sweet tea, has 8 teaspoons of sugar and 120 calories. And the same amount of 100% orange juice has 10 teaspoons of sugar and 170 calories. If you compare these to water or sparkling water, unsweetened tea or diet drinks, which don't have any sugar or calories, you can see how they can lead to weight gain. And you might be surprised to see how orange juice compares to an orange. The orange has just three teaspoons of sugar and 70 calories. That's less than half of the sugar and calories as the juice. Plus, you're getting more fiber when you eat the fruit. Now, if you want to add just a hint of sweetness to anything, one teaspoon of sugar adds only 16 calories. Or you could squeeze some lemon or lime juice or add some fruit to your water for a little flavor. By the way, Cutting out just one 12 ounce soda every day could mean dropping around five pounds in just one year. 
Things like candy, many cereals, and breakfast and snack bars usually have a lot of sugar and little nutrition as well. And foods or drinks with a lot of sugar, salt, or saturated fats can raise the risk for things like heart problems or diabetes. So it's smart to only eat these sometimes. All right, now that you have an idea of what healthy foods are, let's talk about one way your family can get them every day. The plate method can really help with getting a balance of healthy foods in the right amounts. All you need is a plate, but I'm not talking about the biggest plate you've got. It should be a smaller one, about nine inches across. Okay, here's how it works. Imagine the plate is divided into four even sections. Fill half the plate or two sections with fruits and non-starchy vegetables. So in this section, stay away from peas, corn, or potatoes but you can have pretty much anything else, like broccoli, asparagus, carrots, or mushrooms. In the third section, add any grains or starchy veggies you want. This is where you get your energy. Whole grains or veggies are best because they provide the most nutrition. So those potatoes, peas, or corn can go here, but don't go piling anything too high. They should only be about the size of your fist. By the way, if it's your child's plate, it should be about the size of their fist, not yours. The last section of the plate is for protein. Again, that's things like meat, fish, beans, eggs, or tofu. And that should be about the size of a deck of cards. It's best to choose heart-healthy proteins like chicken breast, beans, or salmon. Now, if you eat something like meat lasagna, which has both protein and carbs, one portion will count as half your plate, or two sections. One portion is about one cup for adults and older kids, and a half cup for younger kids. And the other half of the plate should be fruits and non-starchy veggies. And as far as a drink goes, it's best to stick with water or unsweetened tea. Low-fat or fat-free milk is a great choice for kids, and diet drinks are okay from time to time for adults. Also, try to get your family to wait a little bit before going back for seconds. It takes some time, about 20 minutes, for your body to feel full. So we often go back for seconds before our body has even had a chance to realize we don't need more. So take your time and enjoy. But if you're still hungry, go for more vegetables. And satisfy anyone who has a sweet tooth with some fruit, like berries or a baked apple with cinnamon. Of course, desserts and sweets are okay sometimes too. But just go for a small amount or portion, like splitting a cupcake or cookie. A little sweet goes a long way. All right, I know all this is easier said than done, and it can be even more difficult with kids. So next, I'll give you some meal planning tips. So what are some tips for making meals more nutrient-packed? Well, first of all, meals made at home tend to be healthier than most restaurant foods, takeout, or fast foods. So a great first step is to try and make meals as much as possible. Now, I know the thought of that may be overwhelming, and it does take some time. But planning meals ahead of time can make things a lot faster and easier. You can even make extra, so you have leftovers for another meal. To start, plan your meals and make a list of the things you'll need before going to the grocery store. You don't have to come up with brand new ideas for the family, just tweak things so they include more healthy foods. For example, Top high-fiber cereals or breakfast items like oatmeal or yogurt with fruit and nuts. Add your favorite veggies to omelets, casseroles, pasta, sandwiches, and salads. Things like onions, tomatoes, mushrooms, spinach, and peppers are tasty additions. You can also use spaghetti squash or whole wheat pasta in place of regular pasta. And skewer and grill peppers, onions, and pineapple along with chicken. You can even have meatless Mondays, where you go meat-free once a week. For example, you could try replacing the ground beef and chili with mushrooms and beans. Also, think about making meals colorful with different fruits and vegetables. It not only looks tastier, but each color gives you different nutrients. Thinking ahead can help you save money, too. Look through store ads and plan meals around produce and meat that's on sale. You can also stock up on canned goods when the price is right, or there are coupons. At the store, get what you need and try not to stray from your list. And it also helps to have a snack or meal before you shop. Why? Well, believe it or not, it actually makes it easier to pass on tempting snacks and treats when you're not really hungry. And when these things aren't at home, they can't tempt your family, allowing more room for fruits and veggies. All right, when shopping, you wanna stick mostly to the edges of the store. 
That's where you'll find fresh foods like fruits and vegetables, meat, fish, and dairy. Boxed and more processed foods are usually in the middle aisles, but you don't have to totally steer clear. Things like canned fruits and vegetables, beans and nuts are in the center aisles. Just do your best not to wander off your grocery list. And here's the good news. Frozen fruits and veggies count just as much as the fresh ones. They're packed or frozen right after they're picked, so they keep their nutrition. So you don't have to worry as much about them going bad before you can use them or wasting money. Plus, they're always in season and cost less. You can use canned ones too. All right, at home, it also helps to have healthy foods like low-fat dairy and fruits and veggies out in the open. For example, you could keep a bowl of fruit on the counter, so it's easy to grab a piece and go. Put low-fat dairy, like string cheese or yogurt, as well as fruits and veggies at eye level in the refrigerator. A lot of produce is naturally ready to eat, like grapes, cherry tomatoes, and baby carrots. But for those that aren't, cut them up ahead of time to make it more likely you and your family will eat them. And if fruits or vegetables get a little too ripe or limp, you can use them in smoothies or recipes like casseroles or stews. Okay, how you cook something is just as important as what you cook. Try to limit frying. It adds a lot of calories. Remove the skin from poultry, like chicken and turkey. And use spices and herbs like oregano, thyme, basil, or paprika in place of some of the salt you use. All right, another really important tip is to lead by example. So make and eat meals together at home without the TV on whenever you can. It lets kids see adults cook, eat, and enjoy a variety of healthy foods. Kids who eat meals with their families have been shown to eat foods with more nutrients and are more likely to have a healthy weight. And there's the added bonus of getting to spend time together and catch up on everyone's day. Now, believe it or not, you don't have to buy and make separate meals for your kids. Just be sure to have one or two things you know the whole family will eat at each meal. And try not to get discouraged if they won't eat something you put on the table. It can take up to 12 times before kids will even taste something new. It's best not to push them to try anything. You want dinner to be a happy place, not a war zone. Eating and enjoying these foods yourself is the best approach. Continue to offer new foods one at a time at the beginning of the meal when kids are still hungry. And you can always try offering dips or other things to make something like vegetables more tasty. For example, your child might not like plain broccoli, but likes it when it's dipped in a little low-fat ranch. That's great. And eventually, they may like it on its own. Now, young kids are better at listening to their bodies about when they're hungry and when they're not. So it's best not to force them to eat. You can always save their plate for later. Or if they get hungry right before a meal, they can start a little early and then finish eating with the family. And it helps to give kids smaller portions. They don't need as many calories. If they're still hungry, they can always have more. Keep in mind, kids will go through periods when they're more hungry and others when they're not. With growth spurts, they may fill out a little and then grow a few inches in a short amount of time. So then they might look kind of thin. But that's totally normal and healthy. And you can always ask your child's pediatrician if they're at a healthy weight. Also, don't ask kids to clean their plate or use dessert as a reward, like if they finish all their vegetables. I know, a little weird since we're trying to get them to eat more healthy foods, but it can actually lead to eating issues later in life. In fact, try not to use food as a reward for anything, like getting good grades or doing chores. Instead, make sure you compliment good behavior or reward them with stickers, hugs, or special trips like going to the zoo. All right, the bottom line when it comes to mealtimes is this. It's your job as the parent to decide when it's time to eat and what foods and drinks are available. And it's your child's job to decide what and how much to eat from what is offered. Now, something else that's really important. Include your kids in shopping, meal planning, and cooking. It teaches them to appreciate and enjoy food because they've spent time and effort on it. And it gives them important skills for when they leave home. For example, at the store, ask them to help you pick out things on your list or tell them fun facts about different foods. At home, you can have them help stir or cut things for dinner. Okay, another thing before we move on. It's important to have three good meals every day. And if your child is hungry between meals, you can offer a small snack. Stick to things like fruits, veggies, and whole grains. 
for example, an apple with peanut butter or carrots and hummus, make healthy snacks that provide kids with good nutrition. Of course, we've all heard that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Why is that? Well, when our bodies haven't had food all night, they need to refuel. And that gives us energy, helps with mood, and lets us think clearly. Kids who skip breakfast tend to get fewer nutrients over the course of the day. And those who eat breakfast most days have been shown to do better in school because their minds have the energy they need. Now, just like any other meal, what you have for breakfast also matters. Be aware that some breakfast cereals, breakfast bars, or granola bars sound healthy, but actually have a lot of sugar and little fiber or protein. If this is all you can grab some days, that's okay. But better choices have protein, fiber, or healthy fat. These are things like oatmeal topped with cinnamon, fruit, and nuts, whole wheat waffles with peanut butter and banana slices, a smoothie made with low-fat milk, Greek yogurt, fruits, and leafy green veggies, and scrambled eggs with peppers and mushrooms. Foods with protein, fiber, and healthy fat can keep you full longer and help with things like concentration, thinking clearly, and memory. Now, I know time can be an issue in the morning, especially with kids. So to make morning life a bit easier, prepare as much as you can the night before. For example, cut up any fruits or vegetables and set out dishes and utensils. A few extra minutes can mean eating breakfast versus skipping it. Or you can make things to grab and go to eat in the car or at school or work. Try topping yogurt with fresh fruit. Cut up apple slices to dip in peanut butter. Or make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on whole wheat bread. All right, let's move on. Okay, let's move on. All right, being active and getting enough sleep are also really important for everyone in the family. Along with nutrition, they all work together. What do I mean? Well, how much sleep you get can change how much you eat. If you don't get enough sleep, certain hormones or signals in your body make you want to eat more. And of course, that can lead to weight gain. Lack of sleep can also mean you don't have enough energy to be active. And getting exercise is good for your heart build strong bones, helps get rid of stress, gives you energy, improves your mood, and helps you get to or keep at a healthy weight. That's because being active helps people balance how many calories they eat with how many calories their body uses or burns for things like breathing, walking, and other activities. Kids should be active for at least one hour every day. And adults need 30 minutes or more, five days a week. Of course, some activity is better than none. If anyone in your family isn't active now, it's perfectly okay to start slow. You can start with 10 minutes and try to do that a few times a day. That way you can work your way up to 30 or 60 minutes a day. Now, being active means different things for different people. And it's really important to do something you like, so you want to stick with it. All right, your family should do good heart pumping or cardio activities at least a few days a week. These include jumping rope riding a bike, swimming, playing basketball, or dancing, and walking. In fact, walking can even be done indoors if you don't have a good outdoor place to do it, or if the weather is bad. You could go to the mall or a local community center like the YMCA. It's also important to do some resistance exercise to keep your muscles strong. Younger kids should swing on the monkey bars, climb on the playground, or do things like jump around and play tug of war. So encourage them to do things like that a few days a week. And teens and adults can lift weights, do squats or push-ups, or use exercise or resistance bands. Now, it's a really good idea to set a specific time the whole family can be active together. For example, you could take a walk or go to the playground after dinner, or ride bikes together on a Saturday morning. You could even invite other families to join in and make it more fun. All right, that brings me to the last thing. Let's talk about TVs, computers, video games, smartphones, and tablets. Overall, you should aim for no more than two hours a day total on any device, and it's best for young kids to spend even less time. Less time sitting in front of a screen can mean more time for the family to walk and play outside. Even playing a video game that gets you up and moving is better. All right, I know we've talked about a lot of ways you could eat better and be more active as a family. Of course, changing old habits can be hard. The good news is you don't have to tackle everything at once. 
you can just make one small change at a time. That way you'll be able to stick with it, and eventually it'll become second nature. You might be surprised how over time, small changes can make a big difference in your health. So.